Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, for the life that is ours, for the hope that is ours. And on this Palm Sunday, as we remember and give thanks for all that he has done, walk with us, Lord. In fact, help us. Grab us by the hand. Take us along on this journey called Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the amazing celebration of Easter that awaits. We ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem for celebrating the Passover, some saw him as nothing more than a menace. Others saw him as a magician, and still others saw Jesus as the Messiah, the promised Savior and Lord. He entered into a red-hot political mess. It was a powder keg, absolutely ready to explode. Jews from around the area had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover and to make a series of sacrifices. And they also talked smack about the Romans. They hated being under their rule. Every one of them dreamed of that day of independence when they would no longer be under the thumb of those Romans and be a nation once again. And there was a small faction of them willing to do whatever it took, including using force, to make it happen. Now, on the other hand, you have the chief priests, the Pharisees, and the ruling council. They wanted everything to stay good with Rome. They did not want to ruffle anyone's feathers. They wanted things to remain the same because they liked their lifestyle. They liked their place among the people. Oh, and don't forget about Pontius Pilate, the governor of the region. He decides, boy, things could get ugly this Passover with all the people that had come to town. So he decides, I'm going to go and make a visit. So on the very same day, Pontius Pilate and Jesus enter into Jerusalem. Pilate, you can see up here, comes in from the west. He had a war horse with him and was showing the power, the might, the military strength of Rome, and we would squash any type of revolt. Jesus comes in from the east on a donkey, a beast of burden. Ideas, agendas are all colliding. This is the setting for the last week that Jesus was alive. Some think he's a menace. Others think he's a magician. Still others, a few, think he's the Messiah, the Savior. The Jewish leaders see this guy as a menace. For three years, he's been gaining in popularity. His teachings are just astounding people. He's leaving them awestruck. His insight into what we call the Old Testament has been penetrating. Now you add to that all the miracles that Jesus has been performing. All these crowds are now following him. But there's a problem. He's different. He healed on the Sabbath. Blasphemy. He eats dinner with tax collectors, prostitutes, and other sinners. That's unheard of. He's been known to associate with Samaritans. Oh, and he even healed the daughter of a Roman soldier. How dare he do that? This guy is nothing more than a menace who's gaining popularity. Oh, and then you have that whole Lazarus thing. An obscure guy dies, and he's in the grave for four days. Jesus shows up. A large crowd gathers, and Jesus raises him from the dead. That push the leaders over the edge. Instead of marveling at God's mercy and grace in raising a man from the dead, they mutter, this guy is a menace. We need to do something. Consider John chapter 11. The chief priests and Pharisees, right after Lazarus had been raised, gather the council and say, what are we going to do? This man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, Everyone will believe in him. 
The Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So the ruling council decides, Jesus has to go. Verse 51, from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. They are so threatened by Jesus, they put a hit out on him. Eliminate him. It gets worse in John 12. The chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. So now their hit list has two names, Jesus and Lazarus. Maybe if we eliminate them both, that would stop any kind of movement that was going to happen. What about today? Many people still consider Jesus as a menace. We see animosity, hostility towards Christians and Christianity around our world. Many people today would consider the teachings of Jesus completely out of date, and worse than that, they're judgmental. Oh, some of his stuff can be okay, but most of it is not. They would say he is a menace. But now the much bigger question. What about you? I know that you would never say Jesus is a menace, but sometimes our words and actions collide against that. Maybe we're not all completely squared away in his teachings either. Some of them just crunch together for us. Here's an example. Jesus said we are to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I haven't seen much of that happening lately. I haven't seen many people who are actually loving on their enemies. What I have seen a lot of, unfortunately, is labeling, even hating. We put them in a box. We make fun of them. We gather together with like-minded people to lob insults and attacks on what we say is, well, that's the other side. That collides with the teachings of Jesus at times. But do we consider him a menace? Maybe not. How about a magician? That's how the crowds largely saw Jesus. He'd raised a guy from the dead. And that interested them. Let's learn more about what this is all about. John 12. The reason why the crowd went out to meet him was they had heard of the things he had done. Raising Lazarus from the dead? That's not an everyday thing. Let's go find out more. Oh, and by the way, the guy who Jesus raised from the dead, he's going to be there too. Let's investigate. Let's find out about this. I'm not trying to be cynical. I think they were a lot more curious than they were committed. They just wanted to see him. That's all. Jesus was a magician. He could do some pretty spectacular things. Ooh, do you think maybe he'd do some more as he comes into Jerusalem? How about you? It's an interesting picture. Do you see Jesus as a magician? Do you look to Jesus to settle everything in your life that's a little out of kilter? You pray to him. You want him to fix this or fix that. Is your prayer life a grocery list of petitions going to Jesus? It's like, okay, God. Listen, you might want to get a pen and paper for this one. I've got them prioritized. I need this and this and this. Is that all that our prayer life is? God, these are the problems I need you to fix. Again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we should not take those things to God in prayer. In fact, 1 Peter tells us, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Pray to God and ask for his help. That's what we're called to do. But if that's all the further that our relationship with Jesus is, it's kind of shallow. So what happens if he'd say, oh, not yet. Wait. Or worse yet, when God says, I'm sorry, but no. If our relationship is only shallow, it crumbles. It's like those ten lepers who came to Jesus begging that he would heal them. 
And Jesus granted it. But how many came back? One. What about the other nine? Where were they? They got what they wanted, and they just kept on going. Is Jesus just a magician? You see, we need to see Jesus as the Messiah who came into Jerusalem that day. The Son of God, the one who had been promised for years, was coming to do what God called him to do. Now, the disciples didn't quite get it at the time. They didn't think he was a menace, that's for sure. And I honestly don't believe they thought of him as a magician. They were quite confused. And quite frankly, if we'd been there, I think we'd have been confused as well. Jesus' teachings were fresh. They were new. They were insightful. Some of the things Jesus said and did made no sense to the disciples until after the resurrection. Then it became clear to them. Consider John 12 again. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified following his resurrection, then they remembered the things that had been written about him and done to him. It's like the light came on. All the prophecy began to make sense. It was more than a prophecy that a king would come into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. A lot more than that. All the other prophecy from what we call the Old Testament came to fulfillment in Jesus. We need to see Jesus for who he really is. He is the Messiah, the long-awaited one. He's not a menace looking to start a revolt. He's not a magician who's come to send signs to us. He is the Messiah who came to save us from our sin. He entered the city not on a war horse, but on a donkey offering peace. He was absolutely zero threat. And that's the contrast between Pontius Pilate and Jesus. Pilate comes in on a war horse showing the power and might of Rome. Jesus on a simple donkey showing peace. The donkey, by the way, is a symbol of meekness, not weakness. He came for a different purpose. He came to bring us peace. But there's only one way Jesus could do that. Not to bring us peace, not only here on earth, but peace with our Father in heaven. Ironically, the high priest Caiaphas actually prophesied how that peace would come. Backing up to John 11. He said, you do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation should perish. One man should die. Jesus entered Jerusalem to bring peace. What does that mean? Jesus entered Jerusalem to die. The only way he would bring us peace with our Father in heaven was to take our place, go directly to the cross, and take the punishment we deserved. He died the death that you and I should have faced because he wanted to free us. Jesus is the Messiah who saves us. Next Sunday morning, we'll gather back here again for an amazing celebration. Jesus will have risen from the dead, declaring his victory over sin, death, and the devil. But I want to make clear, we really can't just jump straight to Easter. We need to go with Jesus, hand in hand, through this Holy Week. We come together on Thursday in a Seder meal to celebrate the Passover and Jesus giving us communion. We literally taste and see the sacrifice he made for us. On Good Friday, we travel with Jesus to the anguish in the garden, feel the hurt of betrayal and the pain of the cross. We listen as he breathes his last and dies for us. And only then can we come back next Sunday and fully realize and understand Jesus is not a menace. He's not a magician. Jesus is the Messiah.
In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I